Nikki, thank you for having us here. Beautiful place. It's my very first time at Fernando and I'm very excited because today we're going to try the degustation menu. For the very first time. Very first time. You're excited as well, I guess. Yes, yes. Uh, I haven't tried all the dishes yet, so uh, I'm as excited as you are. Nikki, for those who maybe don't know you yet so much, which will be hard to believe, I guess, I think before that project you were like, very big on wine. Yes, um, I wouldn't say very big, um, but uh, what preceded Fernando and what uh, led to Fernando was um, when we ventured into the wine industry. We, um, um, the family business, which was started by my father, Fernando, in 1984, was totally different. It was uh, products uh, in the, the baby lines and uh, personal care products. But then uh, around uh, 2000, 2003, when um, the second generation, my brother and myself joined, uh, joined the company, we shifted to something which is more us, which was uh, beers, wine, uh, alcohol, some food as well. And it kept to develop that way. And uh, after 2004, when there was the boom in the, in the wine industry, there were a lot of opportunities. We tried to take as much uh, of these opportunities as possible. And then our portfolio of wine uh, continued to grow. And today it's a, it's a very interesting, I wouldn't say one of the best, but a very, one of the most interesting in the island, representing some very uh, good producers. And we also moved into accessories as well, with like glassware and, uh, and wine methods like Coraven. So uh, yeah, we're very happy with what we've uh, accomplished so far. No, I can see that the, the final product so far and looks phenomenal. Even you have this like a beautiful interior in here. Yeah. I think those people are quite big in what they do as well. So you'll be starting your uh, wine pairing with a vermouth. It is produced by uh, Pio Cesare. It's uh, Chardonnay based and infused for about 40 days. Uh, along maceration with uh, different herbs, which counts about 40. The main ones are uh, majoran and uh, absent, and then it refines for four uh, months in uh, big uh, oak barrels, and then it's ready to be consumed with a uh, slice of uh, one slice with an orange with a lemon peel. Thank, Thank you so much. Enjoy. Thank you. Cheers. Where were we? The show starts, no? Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, these faces. Yes. Um, um, so uh, when, we when we opened Fernando, the, the idea was uh, more on wine than on food. Yes. Um, so the idea was that wine is something which will always try and be the best offering on the island. Wine and the way it's served. And the concept, we called ourselves a wine theater. Um, a theater where the light is given for everybody to shine. So you have, you have the famous actors, you know, the big wines everybody knows, the big, big producers or uh, big appellations. And then you have the lesser known ones, which we believe deserve the same stage, but people don't know about them. So we wanted to give those wines that opportunity. And uh, when we were, uh, so th this was something which came along. When we started Fernando, we had normal paintings by artists who used to leave their paintings here mm -hmm. and we could sell. So I wanted to dedicate the walls, you know, to what to the soul of Fernando, to the to the wine. So these are all wine, famous wine producers, wine critic, critics, uh, people who are important for the wine industry, but also for us. Some of them are not so famous internationally, but they're very good friends. We know they make great wine. They are people whose wine we we, we distribute, and uh, this is a recollection of uh, of all that. Yes, and I see that you got a couple of uh, signatures from them as yes, well. Yes, yes. Um, uh, we try and whenever... Um, Pardon the chance. Thank you. Thank you. Normally in the restaurants of that level, sometimes the food comes and you don't even know how to eat that. You <laughs> <Yeah. know? laughs> and usually people are taking pictures as well at this stage as well. So. No, of course, yes. So 
gents, we will be starting with the potato crisp, fish budan, yuzu kosho and smoked pike roll, which will be followed by the nori uh, tartlet with beef tartar, oyster cream, and we have some sourdough bread, butter and local wheat pollen. Amazing, thank and you so much. Thank you. Okay, this bon is the magic of Fernando. <laughs> With the with the vermouth. Do you think one day you will collect all the signatures or not? Um, some some have already passed away. Oh, okay. Um, uh, but uh, so far we've tried. Whenever somebody is visiting Malta, uh, mm -hmm. we invite him here to Fernando. We do a small small signing ceremony. Um, um, but in the future. I also intend that if I'm traveling to them, I'll take the frame with me myself and uh, they'll get it signed. So uh, mm. we want as much as possible for them to be signed. I think what is worth to mention, this place itself was inaug inaugurated by Maximilian Reader. By Maximilian Reader, yes. Um, uh, the, the import business, we, we, import, we import Reader, which is, uh, in my opinion, uh, the Rolls Royce of, of wine glassware. They are the people who sort of invented the, the wine glass, the functional wine glass, because before wine, gla wine, wine glasses used to be just fancy, fancy crystal. Yep. And uh, when we opened the space, we invited uh, our suppliers, if they want to come to Malta, to be part of this. You know, This is an extension of what we are doing. So they, they tend to benefit from it as well. And we needed to find one person to officially cut the ribbon. Uh, <laughs> obviously, we did not want to be like the normal cliche of inviting a minister or a politician or you know uh, anyone in politics or, 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 or religion. But it was hard. How are, how are we going to choose one person from out of all these uh, wine producers? Yeah. You know, there is like uh, why me not? Uh, you know, uh, why him <laughs> not me? And so. The, the obvious uh, solution was, was Maximilian Riedel, was he is the guy who produces the glassware, where... Uh, where um, so he kind of connects everything. He connects everything, you know, there's no wine without um, a good wine glass. And right. uh, he accepted our invitation. Uh, we, we know Maximilian on a personal level as well, and uh, it, was, it was a great experience, you know. It was, yeah. a, it was a good it was a good party too so uh, no so so it's nice because it feels like the Fernando does the own way yes regardless no yes yes and I think this is how you really stand out and you you proven because again even opening this place being successful in wine you could just have like a normal nice place but again you go for the quality exactly honestly we we as a, as a family we were never in the catering industry and it was not our intention to be. I wouldn't say it was not like a sort of a dream, but it was a bit of a forbidden dream because of all the complications that uh, that come along with it. So uh, we were interested or tempted, but always like said, ah, let's not do this. We were actually looking to open a wine shop. Mm. And um, well, because we have a lot of a, a, a range of glasses, decanters, gadgets, wines, we need to have our own base to another channel to sell the wines rather than uh, always via third parties. And this came along um, uh, and it was not ideal for a wine shop. But we said, listen, we can do this. All we are passionate about, uh, proper wine storage, proper wine selection, a large selection by the glass, uh, wine serves in the right glassware, um, uh, put it all together and offer this experience to the end customer, which was back in 2018, was not so not so common. There was always a missing link, but we wanted to do things the right way. You know, we pushed, we pushed for excellence, and we keep pushing for excellence in everything we do. And we believe, uh, my, my 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 theory in the restaurant uh, scene is that when you open a restaurant, you have a certain responsibility. You know, uh, people are going to take their time. They're going to get dressed, do their hair, you know, some people go to a hairdresser, do their makeup, maybe buy an outfit. Uh, it's not just the five, uh, you know, the 50 minutes, two hours they spend in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, there's a lot before planning, thinking, looking forward. So when they come here, you have to make sure that they're gonna leave and say, wow, this was a nice evening. You, and, and it stays on a thread, the responsibility between ruining their experience or giving them a breakdown is a little, little line. And when you try and go for the best things, the risk is less. Mm -hmm. So the, I, I believe that's, that's our theory and uh, so far so good. Yes. No, but uh, I really believe and I can see it. And actually you can even feel and that atmosphere is here. It's a little bit like home because the size of it, I think was possible to make it like that. So you're proud from the current team you have? Very much, very much. Um, uh, this is a team which is very special to me personally because I sort of handpicked the people who, uh, who are working here at the moment. I was involved in, in, uh, in the stages of, uh, of having them joining the team. Um, I'm a person who goes very much for the gut feeling and, uh, and you know, the, the results are being seen. This is the best time. Having just got the Michelin star, you know, yes. the, the sixth Michelin star on the island. Yes, so, so receiving the Michelin star. Can you tell us some insight like, so what happened? Like someone called you like, listen, no. how does no, it do? How does actually, it? Many people call me, don't get yeah. me wrong. Uh, but nobody from Michelin uh, would call you. Mm. So uh, when, we opened, when we opened Fernando back in 2018, there was no Michelin guide in Malta. Yes. First time they covered Malta was in 2020 during COVID. Mm. So actually, uh, probably they reviewed the restaurants in 2019 and then they, uh, they gave out the, the, the stars or the plates yeah. in 2020. I think a few weeks or not, not days after it was launched, COVID hit and mm -hmm. the world changed. Um, back then, um, it was not even a plan or in our radar to be a part of that guide. Um, I will uh, go for it. Hands, your next wine is going to be a sparkling from Francia Corda. Uh, it is a classic method sparkling wine produced by Maurizio Zanella in the north of, in the north of Lombardy. Uh, it is called Cader Bosco. Uh, it is coming on to its uh, 45th edition. Uh, the project started in 1974 and it's a blend of 85% uh, Chardonnay, 1.5% Pinot Bianco and 16.5% uh, Pinot Noir. Uh, it, uh, ferments for about seven months and then has 25 months aging in contacts with its skins, mm, which amazing. makes a great autolysis, but at the same time you have some freshness and some floriality, uh, which will go along your next uh, dish based on a chowder. Super. How exciting, no? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what, what else do, what, what, what do you want? Cheers. Cheers. Lovely. Cheers again. Yes. So back in uh, 2018, uh, as I was saying, we opened the restaurant, uh, Michelin Guide came in, uh, and launched in 2020, but they, I don't think they had covered us yet because we were not doing the, the I wouldn't say the type of cuisine, um, because Michelin is very, very tight. If you see, if you see the, the restaurants that are in the Guide, especially the restaurants that have a plate, you have uh, restaurants like Rebecca's, a very good restaurant is doing fine dining. You have uh, a Golden Fork, which I've seen you've done something with them as well. Uh, but then you have a place like Kuya, mm. which is uh, very nice, very casual. But totally um, different. Uh, totally different. They promote good food. We were doing good food, but you know, it was good, well sourced, mm. not, not good creations for, from the kitchen. And, um, and then came uh, a, a very important part when there was a change in chefs, which I'll tell you after. <laughs> after. All right, so on the plate we have a roasted sea bass, on the fish you have smoked pike roux, around romesco sauce, marinated calamari and mussels. Mm. And then here we have the chowder, which is made out of fish bone and buffalo milk. Wow. The magic take, of take a time to smell this. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Bon appetit. Likewise. Then back in 2019, I remember it was October 2019, we we're going to have a change in chefs. Mm -hmm. And uh, since, as I was saying, the idea was always uh, like promoting the wine, and wine is important, we weren't bothered 
with what style of chef we're gonna find. If probably I, we came across a guy who was good to do Peruvian food, would have accepted and changed the food concept. Yeah. And uh, I met the, the previous chef, uh, and and uh, we agreed immediately. Um, uh, we were on the same line, and uh, let's let's go for it. And we started. And uh, Laszlo had started working here in in November. 2019. Mm -hmm. He launched his first proper menu in February uh, 2020, and in March COVID hit, mm -hmm. and so it was crazy. You know? oh, so, I can imagine, so uh, you know, it was a mental block for us. It was a struggle. We tried to do as much as possible, you know, with the little we could. Yeah. And uh, towards the end of the year, if I'm not mistaken. With all the stuff, is we receive an email from Michelin mm -hmm. uh, asking us from some from some information because we might have made it to the guide, and we entered the the guide, mm -hmm. and uh, and then obviously uh, knowing that they have their eyes on us, uh, we, we 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 started like pushing and pushing. Yes, but would you say then, in order to like achieve something, you need to take that little risk? Because I think you trusting the chef back of then course. was a little bit, yeah. But you, you, you were always like this? I, I, you know, I'm a person who doesn't like to do things the normal way. Mm. No, we can, see, uh, we can see clearly. If, if, if you go with the flow, you're, uh, you're just a number. Now sometimes, you know, I, I think you fail more than you succeed when you do it this way, but then it's, it's, it, it's how, how resilient you can be and, uh, and get up from, from, from that failure. So yes, you know, there was a, a long period of time yeah. where people were saying, oh, what are you doing, you know, cooking pigeon, or uh, we want a, a steak. It was, we, were, we were still a restaurant, you know, we're not a, we're, we, whether you have a Michelin star or whatever uh, accolades you have, mm -hmm. you're just a restaurant. But now you're in a position where people come there and accept what you have to offer. Many times they come and want you to do what they want. Mm. You know, so um, uh, yes, you, you have to stick to your horses, and that's that's part of the risk. You know, so uh, you can you can open a restaurant and just yes. do like raw food. You know, and, and but, yeah, people <laughs> cannot come and tell you like I want my food yeah. cooked. But if you manage to get there on your terms. That's a much, much more pleasant success than, uh, than anything, anything else. That's for sure. So in general, then you're not afraid of fail because still you did your own way. I'm not so, you, you, fear of failure always exists. Fear of it, hoping not to. Mm. Is, uh, it's, I, I think it's more being positive mm. and believe, no, no, this will not fail. And even when you're, when you're literally digging your own grave, you yep. will say, okay, no, 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 good times will come, good times will come. So. Uh, you have to have a bit of a positive. Uh, yes. No, and the good times have come. Yes. Now we have the head chef Kurt. Kurt Kurt Kurt. Kurt. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. he will take over. He already make his uh, menu, which we have a pleasure to, to test it now. So the team is ready. Yes. So and there won't be any like particular changes, no? Because you did it and everything is there. So obviously the basis is here. You know the direction. Um, uh, you need a good team. And the good team is very important, uh, whatever you do, whether it's a football game and whether it's uh, whether it's uh, you know a restaurant, you know, yes. it's uh, it's the sum of of, of the of the individuals that yes. makes the, the the final result. And and uh, you know our, our our mentality will not change, like it never changed, that we give the the chef the tools, but also a card balance to 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 be able to do what he's comfortable with. I cannot go in there and and accept Kurt to do what Laszlo was doing. Like I could have not uh, done the same with Laszlo and pretend that Laszlo would do what Craig was doing, which was yeah. the first chef of the restaurant. So so uh, I believe interesting times are ahead now for uh, for Fernando. Is because the eyes are on us. Now we managed to get people's attention. So now we have um, uh, we have the theater. You know, uh, now 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 we're on, now we're on stage and we have the lights on us. Yes. So uh, we have a responsibility not to. Uh, no, but it's good position to be in, right? Yes, 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 yes.
next up we'll be going with a uh, orange wine mm. uh, this is coming from Veneto it is a biodynamic and vegan winery since uh, 1974 and uh, it's basically produced by 100% Pinot Grigio uh, grapes. Fermentation and maceration is done on its skin, that's why the color. Uh, it then, uh, ferment, it then uh, ages in uh, Italian clay amphoras uh, for about uh, seven weeks uh, in contact with its skins, and then it's aged for further uh, seven to eight more months. This gives it some oxidative ar aromas, uh, some tannins, which though uh, still keep the freshness of the wine uh, very alive. Mm. And if I can ask why you use this special machinery? Uh, well, our selection by the glass is uh, quite large. Uh, mm -hmm. These allow us to not um, uh, uh, waste the bottle uh, by not opening it. So the no. uh, wine will never be in contact with oxygen. Uh, after a little while you take out the needle, yeah. uh, it will also just uh, close back with the, uh, with the time. This was also one of those accessories we wanted to promote as part of the it's part of the experience. Yeah. No, it's the theater part, you say. Exactly, mm -hmm. the show, you know. Yeah. But, but it's a very, it's a very, it's a very useful tool. Mm. Fantastic, Nikki. For yourself, when you go, like in your free time, to the restaurant, what do you like normally expect? Um, I vary. I have my favorite restaurants. Yeah. Um, uh, because you come across hard to please in a way. Uh, because you have this unique approach. There are, I, I have certain bugbears. Yeah. Um, like for example, the wine selection, the, uh, the wine glass. I, I, need, I need a good Ooh. wine glass. You know, when I go, when, 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 I, when I'm gonna try my, but I, 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 would, I could settle for a good beer mm -hmm. as well. So our yes. next dish is the Terrin Mekanet with sauce gribish, green apple and finished with horseradish milk on the top. Oof, amazing. amazing. Can't wait, thank you. I, my, my, my favorite food is grills, grilled steaks, mm. um, fries, um, uh, pizza. I love pizza a lot. Um, so I'm not like, always into fine dining. I, lo I, like, I like a lot of ethnic cuisine like um, uh, Lebanese or Arabian foods, uh, Asian, South American, yes. exciting. But then I also do appreciate the, the, the fine dining experience, but less, less regularly. And especially now that Fernando has taken that direction, sometimes I going to a restaurant that reminds me of uh, things we should do or we're not doing, mm. I won't relax. So nothing beats, uh, grilled steak or a pizza. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what, honestly, uh, even though the food has to be good, what's most important for me is the company I am with. I think company is much better than yeah. uh, anything else. It can be some cheese, some ham, and a good bottle of wine, good company, and I'm game. Then you're happy, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, so living that lifestyle, how do you stay fit? <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's, the biggest, uh, that's the biggest challenge. But I yeah, give us the secret because it seems you manage him definitely better than me. <laughs> mm. My God. I follow, no, it's very good. It is very good. I follow a, a fasting diet. So I try to stretch my non eating periods for as much as possible, sometimes over uh, 24 hours. Yeah. Sorry, over 20 hours up to up to a 20, like I eat one meal a day. No. Depend, depends on how big would have been the, the last meal. Yeah. I, I try to train every day, even if, if, I'm, if I'm, I'm nursing a hangover. Yeah. So there has, to be, there has to be some discipline. But sometimes I look forward in those two, three weeks of stretches where I'm, I'm, I'm on a detox. So uh, it's, uh, it's balance, you know, balance is key. So now, like for the viewers, if you can kind of describe a little bit like your home, because being in the wine, is it then obligatory to have like a huge wall of wine <laughs> or what? Sort of, maybe. When people come to, to us, um, uh, they, uh, they expect uh, that I open a good bottle of wine, obviously. Yes. Who, who wouldn't? <laughs> 
but um, home I would like I, I would wish to be able to spend um, more time there mm. uh, I have um, two kids so uh, a third on the way and uh, I'm so much very busy person unfortunately you know with having literally two full-time jobs um, uh, it's it's challenging so uh, the, the the ones who end up you know, missing out more, most is the family um, uh, but then I try to take time time off with travel yeah. uh, as much as possible uh, you know and spend and, and, and spend some good quality time it's better yeah. like a good week than a little a little uh, stolen moment yeah. but yeah home I love to cook myself oh. um, uh, what would you? I, I, what cons is your I, cons I consider myself a good home cook. Uh, <laughs> the only problem is when I get to the plating, mm. and most of the time, by the time I'm plating like the main course, I'm uh, I had too many glasses of wine, mm. so I, I I rush. But but I love cooking. I think it's the thing where I relax the most. Yeah. Some music in the background, cooking. I can yeah. cook uh, anything. Uh, not not this type of cuisine. No, this um, one. Uh, uh, but I try to put in like uh, different flavors and. Um, I have some, I have like people say my rabbit is the best rabbit they had, uh, they had tried, so... Uh, you should do maybe one day, like uh, once in six uh, months time, yes, yeah, like I invite you, you would be in the kitchen. I invite you here and I'll cook the rabbit, uh, <laughs> the rabbit for you and then you tell me your your yeah. But I love cooking, you know, it's uh, I think when you're used to uh, eating good food and you, you want to dedicate the time to try and do it, yeah. you know, you have good taste. Um, uh, and uh, eating good food, at, good food at home makes you even more choosy when you're eating out. In fact, one thing I had, no, I, I had noticed is that prior to COVID, uh, people would accept a lesser meal or, or, or a lesser experience or, uh, or a steak which was chewy or not so good and they would pay, to pay for it and not complain. During those two years where literally we spent six months uh, locked in our homes, we bought better meat, we bought better wines, we upped our level to keep our sanity. The only thing we could do is maximize the, the, the enjoyment at home. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, following uh, the reopening after COVID, people had higher expectations. You know, uh, I know what a good steak tastes like and I can cook it. Mm. myself who, who, who's not a chef so if I'm gonna go and pay money for it and you should pay money in a restaurant you know um, mm -hmm. people sometimes expect cheap uh, home prices at home but you know this is a business yes, yes. you know um, uh, and uh, but give it but give a good product so as I said first like the responsibility of people coming to your restaurant it's a show they're going to the theater so make sure that you impress them and you're gonna benefit because if, 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 you, if you impress, um, uh, you know, people are going to talk about you. you know? Yes. No, no but, but as you said, it's the providing that, you know, like, because for the first time, really, I had someone describing this way that you have so much respect to the client, knowing it take them this two hours or special outfit to even come here. Of course. And then you know that you're at your best when they actually arrive and... Mind you, I don't want to sound like some guy who's waking up in the morning uh, and the first thing that crosses my head is uh, I want to please people, you know? Yes, yes. Uh, the first thing that crosses my head is like I need to get to the gym because uh, <laughs> I have to go back to work. But, but, yeah, but yes, yes, you know, um, uh, I know, I know because I go and eat out myself. And, and uh, it's disappointing if I go to a restaurant. It, it, it was planned, you know? Uh, got the babysitter at home, taking care of the kids, go with my wife, we we'll go to the restaurant, and, uh, you know, uh, you, you give me bad food. Or, uh, or as I tell you I didn't like something, and, and then you tell me, no, that's the way it should, it, it, it should be. You know, you, spo yeah. you spoiled my, my, the effort. I did to do that, uh, like anything in life. Can you imagine going to, I don't know, uh, watch watch uh, watch uh, the theater, and uh, and the main actor is taking calls on his phone, mm. you no, know, ignoring the ignoring the customer. So this yeah. this this is this is today's theater. You know, the the, the restaurant is is very much 
uh, well, there are many people performing. Today we have the chef, the Chilla, we have Anna, we have Zach. Everybody is doing his, uh, and they put an effort in it. So um, yes. it's also very important and equally important that the customer also appreciates. Because, um, you know, these people are doing their best to give you a good service. So when you actually find that balance, I think the experience is going to be enjoyable for everyone. The next wine uh, on your wine pairing is going to be Hungarian. Uh, we're in the Tokai region with the Oremos winery, uh, which belongs at the moment to Tempos Vega Sicilia, the only winery that uh, uh, the Ribera del Duero house uh, have abroad, uh, or, I mean, like out of Spain. Uh, the 2018 has been a, a warm vintage for uh, 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 the Hungarian uh, wine region, uh, which resulted in an early harvest, uh, which uh, gives along like uh, great freshness and good acidity as well. Uh, the wine ferments for about 8 to 12 days in uh, uh, small uh, oak barrels and uh, then is bottled with 4 months of age and being released to the market. I always admire when the sommelier works and they have this passion to this and they know the, the stuff. It's very yeah, impressive. It's important to pass on the, the information. You know? yeah. it's, uh, it's part of the, part of the experience. But then you think like, how is it even possible to know so much? Because there's so many type of wines, there is story attached to everything. Very uh, impressive. From, from my experience, when, when, you, when you work in the industry, you are exposed to so many wines mm. that, um, uh, I won't say it's easier, but you get but a hang of it. You're constantly learning, mm. you know, constantly asking questions. And uh, it's amazing. It's a, I do have my favorite styles of wine. Mm. Um, uh, but it's, it's hard to pinpoint one wine. In an evening, I can say this was my favorite wine. Uh, there are some wines which are the most memorable wines I would have tried in a period of time. But uh, I have, uh, there's no one wine that I would drink uh, constantly. It's boring, you know, mm. I need to change. So as next dish from the tasting menu, we have the broccoli agnolotti with comte velute and sabaccia. Mm. Thank Enjoy. you so much. Super, thank you. Mm. Kurt is trying to show his wings, huh? Mm -hmm. Amazing dish. No, but yes, I must say, like, he announcing that he's coming here, he created a lot of noise. Yes. Which is good, I guess, right? Um, um, <laughs> he came very much in a hot seat, you know, usually um, uh, anyone in a new position is giving uh, a warm-up period. Um, uh, Kurt didn't have that opportunity. He, mm. uh, he started uh, a few days later, we got the, we got the star and uh, the restaurant ended up being busy every day, so... Uh, Straight in but, but uh, honestly, I think, you know, the, seeing, seeing this, um, in such a short period of time, it's uh, it's good to come now, but in, 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 a, in, a, in a, the, the, the future, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, great great times for Fernando. Mm, for sure. What could possibly be next, like for you? Mm. Is any way maybe Fernando will get the second location, or I don't know. You 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 dream about like different projects, or um, um, there were things which. Which personally I I used to dream about, like I used to say, maybe taking Fernando in a bigger location uh, if, if the opportunity comes. But it's it's something which you cannot think about because it's like uh, opportunities that have to come along. Yes. Um, in August we opened the second restaurant, um, which actually there was a time we had discussed. Shall we call it? Um, Fernando too, but you cannot, you, you cannot, Fernando re Junior. you cannot recreate a concept because yeah. you need the same team, mm. uh, the same type of people, the same type of service. You're gonna, have, you're not gonna have two chefs doing the same job. Wow. You know? So uh, it goes that deep that the people course, actually form Fernando un rather than un 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 unless you have unless you have uh, you have a sort of structure where there is a top guy who's creating the. The menu for both places, and then you have the head chef of the pla uh, of the places following that system. Mm. Um, uh, it's it's very hard, uh, very hard to do. 
to open the second place. We called it Onella. The idea of Onella was a like play with words of the traditional Maltese garment. Um, um, I wanted to create something more casual, but still focused on wine and uh, and offering like good, good, uh, good food, uh, and keep here as our more elevated offering. Um, uh, so the next plan. I was too ambitious to say, um, get a second star for uh, for Fernando. Mm. You know, but knowing you, I think you might have ideas. Be great. <laughs> so, so my focus now is trying to 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 um, uh, get uh, a listing or ideally a bib for uh, for Onella, mm. using also uh, the experience and the luxury of having two teams. Yeah. You know, so if something's working well here, you know, we can try to transmit what worked here. Which, which, which actually, we really don't know which part uh, impressed uh, impressed the mission inspectors. Okay, mm. it's the it's, uh, it's the food, but it's the whole the whole experience. So um, we would like uh, to transmit that know-how, that successful part of Fernando to Anella. And, uh, and maybe get it there, you know, to have like uh, two restaurants from two yeah. uh, on uh, on the guide for, for, for a family who uh, was never in the industry. Uh, all, all we put on the table is uh, is love and passion for what we do. So mm. uh, And the rest happened automatically. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we, none, none, none of me and my brother and sister like complete the university, for example, you know, we learned on the train, you know, we're people of the street. So uh, I learned by the mistakes that I do and I keep on doing, you know, yeah. so uh, now, now we can do less mistakes in a new venture. So, but yes, I, 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 can, I can officially say that that's, the, that's a target. I must say with every course, it's getting better. Yep, yep. Let's see what happened next. That's the idea to keep uh, escalating. Yeah. <laughs> so from Hungary, we're moving now to France yeah, with Nuit Saint Georges. Uh, Nuit Saint Georges vinifies most of his wines, uh, its wines here red, uh, with Pinot Noir based uh, uh, wines. This time we're having a white wine uh, produced by Albert Vichot. It's a 2013 vintage and it's a monopole of uh, uh, La Terrasse. Uh, here you're having a wine which is developing quite aging notes. And uh, what brought me to this wine pairing is the presence of uh, uh, Van John on the um, uh, dish, uh, where the uh, aging aromas of this uh, wine can uh, get along very well. And again, the glasses are changing. You make yes, it all yeah, that, 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 That's the real, that's the real, uh, the real idea of wine, where where uh, the wine. Is, has a different DNA, you know, uh, me and you cannot wear the same suit, you know, but, but it, it's like a tailor-made, uh, a tailor-made uh, wine glass for the wine and mm -hmm. that will change the experience completely and that's part of the experience we wanted to offer here, you know. Yeah. Nowadays, nowadays most restaurants in the island of a certain level are, are, are doing this concept, so. Oh. Mm. It's good. Yes, it's 2013. Some people say white wine cannot age. Mm. This is a 10 year old white wine. Oh, it's fantastic. So we, we break that taboo too. <laughs> so I think uh, finally we uh, arrive to the juice of it. Why Fernando? Where, where Why the name Fernando? come from? So, uh, as I had said <coughs> in, in the beginning, it was my dad who started, like, who, who took the family uh, in, in, the biz in, in business. Uh, he used to he used to work with a local company, uh, but then decided to start his own thing back in 1984. And uh, uh, you know we were lucky, you know, to have to have uh, a person, the, the 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 patriarch of the family, you know, work so hard and give us uh, some comfort, which uh, which growing up we we uh, we could. You know, afford to take risks, yes. and uh, and I think you know sometimes you, know, you go out and talk that you can you can take risks and I did this I did that, 
But you, you always take can, you you take certain risks when 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 you they're easier when you know that you have a cushion to uh, to lie on. You know, yeah. uh, knowing that whatever happens, you're gonna have a, a bed to sleep on at night and a roof on. Yeah. You are in a better position to take risks. And uh, as I said, I, we did a lot of mistakes. You know, to get to where we are today. I'm not saying we are somewhere, but we you know somewhere great. But we we are we 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 moved. Yeah. And. Uh, when when we are opening Fernando, you know this is our story. This is our family, our, our family story, and uh, deservedly we named it. Uh, it's, a, it's a thank you to our dad who's still alive, mind you. But it's good to honor somebody, to show gratitude when somebody is still living, rather than doing like some bust or statue when the guy is not here anymore, yeah. which he won't be able to see. Um, uh, but it happens in life, you know, sometimes it's too late to say thank you. So this is our way to say thank you, but also to show that this is not just a restaurant. This is not just uh, a place uh, where you come and eat. This is, mm -hmm. this is a build up, you know. So, mm -hmm. so even though uh, it's the, the, the involvement in the wine, it's, it's, uh, it's also when my dad used to produce his own brand of uh, of laundry detergents, you know, it's it's mm. part it's part of it's irrelevant for for many, but not for us. Mm. So there is a history in here, and 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 the person who started it all, you know, it's uh, it's Fernando. You know, my mom might be jealous <laughs> if she gets to hear this, uh, but obviously she was also a very important part in, in our in, in our growing. You know, having kids, I know how hard it is to keep things together, but she did a fantastic job, and now she does it also with our grandkids. But it was my father's decision to move into business. I don't know if it would have played better for me, maybe, or for us, for my brother and sister, if we didn't have a family business, maybe focus on another career. And uh, sometimes I see people who were with me at school, they're living better lives maybe than I do. Um, uh, I was always pulled to, to follow up on my father's footsteps. Mm -hmm. but. But it's named after him. Uh, it's a thank you. It's our family history, you know. So, uh, yeah. and uh, in my opinion, it, it gives a lot of soul to uh, to what we're doing. Yeah. No, I would imagine your dad when he comes here. I think he, maybe I don't know if it's true. Like he's kind of maybe allowed to even wander around for first ten seconds <laughs> because he's this proud, you know. And nah, then he's like, okay, that he, he loves it. Uh, he, he he doesn't always show it, but. Uh, you know, it's uh, when you go there and people recognize his picture and say, oh. you know, uh, that's that's Fernando, that's Fernando. <laughs> when we go the when we go the star, people like, you know, you have a star next to your name now, you know, and uh, proud uh, he is he is uh, he is proud about it, and uh, you know, it's uh, he he supported us uh, all along the way, and uh, especially when there was. Covid times where you know they were the worst time for this industry. They're bad times. You know, you wake up in the morning, and I, I, I was on both sides of the industry: yeah. the supplier, two restaurants, mm. and the, the 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 other thing I could uh, lay on is uh, is having a restaurant myself. So literally, I, I, I one morning, more than one morning, I asked myself like, what what the hell would I do? You know, where yeah. where, where would I go and work? Mm. Uh, because as well, I think people need to understand that this type of cuisine and food you do, it's impossible to do takeaways, no? No, no, you cannot. Yeah. You cannot. You know, we, we try to do something like with these wine boxes, put some cheese and a bottle of wine in. Yeah. But uh, when we launched it, they had also said that you, can be, you, you cannot be more of, than two people in public. It became so mm. complicated that we say, listen, uh, stay home, do nothing. Yeah. And uh, they were tough times. Luckily, those times are gone. Yes, they're gone, gone, and we kick them in the butt. I think um, uh, because uh, the word showed uh, showed resilience. Oh, people suffered, people passed away. Uh, one of the people who who have his uh, portrait here, uh, the air friend Pio Boffa, uh, passed away with uh, with COVID too. Mm. Um, uh, but but we won, you know, yeah. and, and they were times where. Um, uh, you know, it's easy to say, listen, I'm going, I have to give up, you know, uh, yeah. so we had help, people came together and um, I think it's a, it's a, it's a proud mo moment for, for humanity in general, so let's hope we never get back to that. 
fish, how nice. How Maltese, I would say as well. You cannot not have fish uh, in a Maltese tasting menu. Exactly. So, Jan's says next dish we have the sea bass with sea urchin, roasted cauliflower, and vinjon. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy. Likewise, thank you. All, 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 uh, all interviews should be like this. You know, eat, eating and drinking. Yes. How different and, and nice. I love this. Yeah, this is glass in summer. And, uh, and uh, when we fish, it's like a, a celebration mm. many times. So I would want to have fish, you know, you start with the raw fish and then move into the cooked and fried fish. Mm. And uh, then like a, a nice big fish with sides. It's not just like one dish thing. When it comes to meat, I'm okay. Like a nice grilled uh, T-bone steak or ribeye steak. But fish, I want to have lots of it. <laughs> I love going to Sicily. For, uh, for that season. So next up for you is gonna be a local wine. We're going with the Philippe Vellier of uh, uh, Tabeta Wineries, which is a blend of Syrah, Cabernet Franc. Uh, the history of Tabeta is uh, relatively recent. Their vines counts uh, uh, the age of 22 to 23 years as they planted the vines uh, in early 2000s. Local touch, how nice. Yes. You found the space. You need to, you need to add something local, you know? Mm. I have I have great respect for for this winery and uh, because obviously with, with your business you get to visit them quite often and see well, we, have, we, have, we have no like involvement with the with the local uh, with the local wine producers mm. uh, we made it a point uh, as part of the uh, wine theater concept to have most of the local of a space you know space is limited uh, to have most of the local producers um, uh, available in the in, in the wine list, but uh, Tabetta, I, I have a special connection with them because um, they had a lot of adverse to face, and um, were always patient and uh, kept doing what they're doing uh, against the wave and managed to produce, uh, in my opinion, a fantastic wine. Mm. Ooh, thank you. No, but that was that part when you said when you cook at home, it's you would never no, arrive no, no, to that. No, I would never <laughs> arrive to that. Especially by the, by the stage where we're going to cook uh, the fourth course. Oh. <laughs> All right, so here we have our next course, the chicken liver rouge with sauce Sharon and fresh local peas. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. One of the things the the, uh, the new chef wants to bring on the table to to be very seasonal and in, mm -hmm. uh, in the menu change to change the menu more uh, more regularly. So who would want to taste this dish? He knows that he has like a couple of weeks to be able to get the best quality pea. Mm -hmm. So uh, the menu, not all the menu, but certain dishes in the menu are going to be changed uh, more frequently. Nice, fresh, local. So, uh, and keep it fresh. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Let's dive in. Yep. Mm. Nice. If I would ask you for the level of the restaurants in Malta, are you like satisfied, surprised, happy? There was a room to improve. Room, room for improvement. You know, is something which there will always be, always be. I'm, uh, and it's important to, to to keep that in mind in life. Um, but I'm very happy, especially. Uh, you know, as I, I always say, you know, I, I, I'm on two sides of the of the <laughs> spectrum, but I've seen. Uh, why uh, restaurants investing, changing concepts today. Um, it's not just like the good restaurant has to be fine dining. 
today. Let's take pizza. We mentioned pizza first. Mm -hmm. Today, you have a lot of restaurants who are cooking excellent pizza. In, in the past, I used to go to Italy and go the first thing, like I want a good plate of pasta or a good pizza. Now we're doing it. We're using the good ingredients. We have good chefs. Um, uh, so in my opinion, in my opinion, I would say today we are even better than some of our counter, uh, com like, you know, uh, Malta. I would prefer to eat in Malta than eat in Sicily mm. as a global cuisine, you yeah. know? If we want to eat like fish, yeah, maybe Sicily sometimes have an advantage. Uh, bigger country, more, 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 more fish available, more chefs available. But when it comes to the, to, to, uh, the, com the global uh, scene, I think I, I, I think Malta is doing a fantastic job. Mm. I'm very, I'm very happy. I think being an island, then whatever you do, like all eyes are on you. So I think it comes down then when you open something, you really put a lot of thought into this. Yes. So maybe that is that factor. Being an island is very challenging, mind you, because if, if, if you have a restaurant in Rome and need a product from France, they drive in there. And in a few hours in there. Yeah. In Malta, we have to import everything by air or by sea. So it's mm. a big, big, big challenge. So uh, the zero mile concept for us is very hard because we're very small. Mm -hmm. And uh, to import the goods is also very expensive. So fly in goods uh, or, 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 uh, or ship goods in refrigerated containers, they keep piling up the costs. So that's why in Malta, um, uh, a steak will cost much, le much more expensive than in Tuscany where they just have to cross the road and they have a, yeah. they have a cow farm there. So uh, it's, it's challenging. But, but Maltese are known to be brave, to be resilient, and uh, it's seen in, in the business community by far. Nikki, as per uh, website, our philosophy of Fernando, we can read. It's a space where people can enjoy the finer things in life. Yep. That was uh, some... When we, when, we, when we started Fernando, it was the first sort of uh, part of the website, but it didn't change. Um, um, finer things in life. What is the finer things in life? Good, good food, good wine, and, uh, and products which, uh, which are sourced meticulously in order to bring the best to the table and, uh, and uh, respect the ingredient, cook, and, uh, cook it in the best way. For example, uh, one thing that stuck to Fernando since, uh, since we, we, we opened our doors is, uh, is uh, the jamon. Um, uh, we are now importing uh, the jamon directly from Spain. It's known to be, uh, this is a perfect Oof. portion of... Uh, no, and you were still being cut best. carefully. You could see it, yeah? Yes. This is the best... Uh, ham in the world. Mm. I consider myself a big lover of uh, Italian food. I love their, uh, their hams, their parma ham, but when it comes to this, I think uh, everybody has to bow for the... Yes. No, for it's normally and, beautiful and, 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 and you, you know. And you try it, you know. You, usually, oh. usually uh, guests at Fernando, they take it as a starter. Yeah. Like the, they sit down before they order the food or decide, uh, you know, what wine they're going to choose. They just order a a plate of uh, of hamon. Mm. Which, um, it's nice. You can be quiet for ten seconds. Yeah. <laughs> the finer things is li in, in in life, you know. Mm. Um, and, uh, and as a person who's very passionate of uh, you know uh, about about these things, the the work that goes in to produce these uh, uh, an Iberian black pig. It's fed acorns only. Um, yeah. Pricey, but uh, but worth it. It does the job, yes. Beautiful moment. But it's nice because I think now we see less in Malta that is on display that you see how the waiter is cutting it. It's um, it's an acquired skill to be able to to cut uh, a hamon. In Spain, sometimes it's a bit of a tradition passed on between uh, uh, families. Yes. 
but um, uh, but I I, I think uh, here we managed to to ace it. Yes. Like, uh, practice makes perfect, and this is how we present our uh, our hammer. And uh, even though people come here for the the food that's coming out from our kitchen from our chefs. Um, when they when they see the hamon, it's uh, it's, it's very popular. Yeah. But we, I, I I think we go through uh, like uh, a leg every every two weeks uh, oh. approximately, which is uh, that's the feedback that people really appreciate. Exactly. And once and and once they try it, uh, you know they they they, they, they will want it again because it's. It's unique. It's good. You know. I think it brings you kind of sort of good memories, yes. even holiday feeling or something like that. So you will be uh, closing your wine pairing with a 1989 wine uh, produced by uh, Gerard Bertrand. I'm spoiling uh, you, coming in, <laughs> in the south of France, and it is a style of fortified wines produced mm. 100% by uh, Grenache Noir grapes. Wow, exciting! The year I've been born. 89, even more. Yeah. Wow, amazing. So give him some more. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is another of my favorite producers, mm. Gerard Bertrand. He comes uh, from the south of France. He's a rugby legend in France as well. Mm. Yeah, the rugby in France is uh, big as well here. Yeah. Nice. It's good experience to hear that passion of yours to wine and the yeah. whole industry. To be honest, it's easier to have a oh. to have a passion towards uh, wine than if I was selling, I don't know, electricity cables. You yes. know? So uh, yes. it's it's an interesting <laughs> uh, interesting product to be passionate about. So. Uh, no, so you chose well. Nice. I chose well. Um, yes. I, I, I was wise when I took this decision. <laughs> okay, so nicely we arrive now to the dessert part. Yes. Personally, I'm not very much of a of a dessert person. Yeah. I'm, um, but when I'm, I, I actually only have a dessert if it's part of a of a tasting menu. In fact, here at Fernando, we uh, we focus a lot of che on, on cheese as well. Um, mm. But me personally, I prefer to go for cheese usually than. Uh, no, but than when you get with wine, it's fantastic, right? But yes, yeah. But that is, this is also a wine which will do very well with yeah. uh, with cheese. Of course, something super fancy couldn't be just normal. Obviously, <laughs> this is the this is the very important part in the dinner when you're closing. Mm. You have to you have to close in style. Yes. And, and Fernando we're has. finishing off with the Araguani chocolate ganache, prune and tonka beans. Enjoy. Thank you, you so much. All right. So what are your views of, uh, of our, uh, our food so far and the new... You, you, you are the, the first person on the island who has uh, tried Kurt's uh, tasting yes. menu. No, I'm very privileged. Thank you very much for that opportunity. No, I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm more than full already. So yes. it already hit all the boxes. The wine was fantastic. The chicken, and the fish. I think the reaction shows it all. But now dessert. No, I'm uh, very happy to see Fernando from like the real side, I would uh, describe it. Yes. It's like, so you um, gain new fun, I must say. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad. It's a privilege. As we see, dessert plates are empty. I think that sums, that, uh, sums it all the best. I don't know, I, we kind of leave it to you to judge how it was, what do you like the most or not. For me, I didn't leave anything, I was more than happy. I'm super full, it would be hard for me to walk home, but I'll manage somehow. Thank you very much. Welcome, thanks for, uh, for, uh, for being here, for uh, being interested in, uh, in Fernando, in our yeah. past, in our, in our future too. And, uh, I look forward to having you uh, on, uh, on one of our tables next time. And exactly. I, and I promise you I'll cook rabbit uh, <laughs> in, uh, in a few months' time. So. Yes. So on the note of finish, to coming back to that website part, when I read it, the Fernando is not just a restaurant, it's an experience. Yes. I was struck by this and I, from then I said, okay, I have to experience it. I mean, so thank you very much. Are you happy with the experience? More than happy. I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kamil.
Thank this you. is your Michelin star restaurant. Fernando!